Hi, I'm Bruce from The Pro's Closet. I've been cycling for over 10 years, and I've tried a lot of things to get faster and more comfortable on my bike. But somehow, the one thing I still haven't done is get a professional bike fit. But today, that's gonna change. We're here at Retool's bike fitting space located at the Specialized Experience Center in Boulder, Colorado. I just got a new bike to race Dirty Kanza, and since I've never ridden 200 miles before, I wanna try and maximize my comfort and efficiency and minimize the chance of injury. Even if you're not gonna do an ultra endurance race like Dirty Kanza, a professional bike fit can help you get the most out of your bike and the most out of your body. So Retool, they use the most advanced technology on the market to help fit riders, and they fit everyone from beginners to the best racers in the world. So let's go see what they can do for me. Retool started just over 10 years ago as a, a retail version of a motion capture bike fit experience. You know, there are technologies that are capable of capturing cycling motion dynamically, but they were never accessible to retailers, to bike shops. So this is the Specialized Boulder Experience Center. I'm Jason Williams, I'm one of the lead fitters here at Retool headquarters in Boulder, Colorado. It is a, a multi-purpose space. Uh, it is a branch office of Specialized, so we have a lot of Specialized employees here that work on any number of things, Retool being one part of that. The S Digital branch of Specialized is in charge of the digital assets uh, for Specialized, which would be the Ride app, the Angie crash sensor on the helmet, and Retool being one of those uh, digital elements of Specialized. We are kind of in this space as well. The Experience Center, though, is also a demo space where we have up to 150 demo bikes. In addition to the demo space, we have two premium fit studios where we do a lot of retool fitting here. The public can come in and have a chance to get fit at retool headquarters. So when Bruce came in, he was planning to race the Dirty Kanza in a few months. He has a lot of experience in road racing and mountain bike racing, but the gravel category was kind of a new category for Bruce. So we really did want to address a position that was appropriate for an event like Dirty Kanza. We definitely tailored the experience to a long distance gravel event. So targeting uh, many hours on the saddle, gravel terrain, um, and really wanted to tailor that bike and the experience to something appropriate for Bruce. And we'll talk about saddle width. Let's do it on the match tower out here. So come on out this way. Sure. So if a rider walks into a store, we can interface with this. If you're looking for a new bike, new shoes, new saddles, we can kind of pick which module we're gonna work with. You can see it's picking up on the sit bones. I think this is reading a little far off, so just kind of um, shift around a little bit and kind of find Based it. on the DSD feedback, we measured and found that Bruce's sit bones were a little bit on the wide side relative to the saddle that he was riding. All right, go ahead and kick the shoes off. I'm gonna have you kneel on the bench here. Curious to see if there's anything that shows up in your assessment. So that's what we consider kind of neutral ankle, and you see how that kind of forefoot comes up off the ground. So that's kind of neutral ankle and foot, and then let it relax. That's this kind of rotation that can happen at the knee as you push down on the pedals. And then we have a little bit of kind of tibial varum, that slight bowing to the low leg, which again, very normal, just an observation there. And that's kind of when that foot kind of does that little bit of collapse there is to try and accommodate the floor. I mean, that's how you balance and walk. Um, on the bike, sometimes that can be a, a, a issue with knee stability. A couple of observations that we found during the assessment, when we were looking at the way your knees move naturally, we noticed that there was a trend towards a little bit of an outward movement with the knee. We saw that show up on the bike, both visually and in the dynamic motion capture with the retool data. That does give us some information about making some specific changes in stance width to try and manage uh, knee tracking to make sure that you're pedaling very vertically and uh, in a very efficient manner. Again, we're seeing this pattern of, you know, symptoms on the right side and assessments on the right side that indicate, okay, that's where we might be able to make gains and, and hopefully put out some of the trouble that you've had, you know, some issue with the knee. I think on road and gravel, keeping it a little bit more neutral, back end of range is good, but I, th I still think you wanna be under the ball of the foot with, you know, um, at least behind that first metatarsal by about 15 mil is kind of a good benchmark. So, you know, we'll just kind of manually check the float, you know, make sure that when you stop here, 
you have freedom to go inboard and outboard. You know, I think we just need to give that foot and ankle a little help, a little stability. So we'll, we'll make some custom footbeds to kind of try and control that foot. Um, so we'll make some nice customs there because you don't need a tall arch, but if we can just stabilize that foot a little bit, I think there'll be a nice, a nice benefit there. During the assessment, we noticed you had a little bit of arch collapsed, a little bit of sort of pronation at the foot and ankle. Um, sometimes that can be associated with knee pain. So we did decide to go to a custom footbed. We make retool heat moldable custom footbeds and give a nice comfortable natural footbed and also stabilize the knee and ankle. You know, I generally, um, fit-wise, kind of industry standard is to run up to two mil pedal washers. So you have one on there as is. So I'm really just gonna add an extra millimeter to each side. It's not gonna be huge, but we'll give you a little bit of extra width there. Early on, we started collecting data from the best riders out there. So we went to uh, pro elite road and mountain teams and collected motion tracking data from the best that there were uh, to see how those riders rode their bikes. Then from there, we've really integrated a lot more, I would say, let's say normal rider fit data. So when we collect data um, amongst our retool team, we can then look through the data to find the, the normative range, you know, what type of angles are normal for most riders. But our ranges are based on all kinds of riders. So pro elite athletes and your everyday riders and the weekend warriors. And we can collect all of that data to find averages of where people uh, tend to feel most natural and where they're most neutral on the bike. So this is the actual harness itself. Um, each of these joint markers has an LED, sort of a live um, LED that flashes at the camera. Basically captures at every point in the pedal stroke. So we're getting you know, front, top, bottom, side, and everywhere in between. So when you came in, uh, you had built up a new bike with dirty cans in mind, and I think with, with a, a good uh, assumption, wanted to go a little shorter and taller than your road race bike. And I think that makes perfect sense for a, a endurance gravel fit. So the stick figure version there, that's your kind of right side profile, right? So the right side of your body there in profile. In that window there, it says bike friend, that blue pie wedge, I imagine that to be the head tube, right? Okay. And I believe you put a 90 mil stem on there, which made perfect sense. As we collected the motion tracking data, the dynamic fit data from the retool system, uh, we can look at both back angle and your extension from hip, shoulder to wrist. And we did find that it was on the shorter side, but maybe a little too much, which was putting in a little bit of a closed off or a crowded position. We put the adjustable stem on and adjusted the front end out and tried several different positions in close sequence. We could do that with the motion tracking data running to see what the numbers look like, but also to get your perception, to get your feedback and feel. As we lengthened the stem, uh, you felt a little bit more relaxed and natural. The retool numbers came a little bit more normal in range. They were uh, a little out of range with the short stem as we lengthened it a little bit. Um, your numbers, your data looked better and your position looked better, your feel was better. So kind of a, a home run when we get better feel and better data feedback from the retool system. So this, we use the same um, system, the same cameras to measure the bike. So this is what we call the Zin wand. Um, there's four LEDs on here, just like you have on your body. And we can triangulate the distance of where these LEDs are to the tip of the wand. So the software is gonna prompt me to grab a series of markers on the frame. As long as we have, um, we follow the markers, the first three set the mid plane of the bike. So we have the kind of the midline. You know, historically, we've always recommended against changing a fit before a big event. There's no question that it's not the ideal circumstance to make a fit change the week before. That said, when people are training a lot and they're in the final weeks before a big event, if they're having discomfort, can we make an improvement on that discomfort? Yes, the adaptation period could be such that it throws a curveball uh, in your race preparation. So. Certainly in your case, three months or sooner before a big event is ideally the minimum amount of time. We would like to give you several months of time to adjust to the position before you have a, a big race or event. There is an option to find a local fitter on the retool.com website. You can enter your location and we'll offer regional fitters that are well experienced and really at the top of their game um, in a region near you. Certainly we know that you know, a bike fit is an expensive item. I've heard numerous times that it's one of the best things you could spend money on. Obviously I'm partial, 
Um, but yeah, you know, people do spend a lot of money on these things or even with a moderately priced bike. It's something that they plan to spend a lot of time with and really spend a lot of time riding. It is worthwhile for every rider. We fit riders of every category. It's not just for road racers or mountain bike racers. The time and the money spent to optimize a position is really valuable for every rider, no matter what the case is.